Hey everybody, Dr. Rick here. Today we're also doing a video on the battery tester. So a lot of our tools are still at our old place and so we're having to actually buy some tools that we have already and actually some name brands. So we're trying to save a little money. Um, today we bought the Conwee um, battery tester. And so, pretty simple. Um, it actually did help us with this truck because we had the alternator burn out here on the harness and also we had bad batteries so they warranted the batteries and the alternator so if you come on up here we'll show you what we have here um, so these are the newer batteries but you can see if we, we got this one disconnected so we're just doing individual batteries if you have a dual battery setup you need to make sure you're not testing this one without taking the cable off we'll actually test the other one too so again you know we have the cables properly um, placed and then if you see here we'll pull this screen protector off so we can see it so you can see right now we have 12.56 volts so we're just going to go ahead and check it today so we're going to hit in vehicle out of vehicle this one would be technically considered out of vehicle because it does not have the um, positive connector so we're going to just hit out of vehicle enter so the type of battery so this is a regular flooded AGM, AGM, gel, lithium. So we know it's a flooded too because it has the water ports on top as well. So hit enter. Cold cranking amp. So you can go to the battery up right here. This is 850 cold cranking amp. And so that's what we want to put in here. If it's not in here already, it's already here. So just going to hit enter. Okay, now it's testing. It's kind of impressed because the other one had a bunch of resistors. Um, this one is just smaller don't have the heavy duty resist like the other one but you can see 94 percent the ohm was 3.41 i think that would be milli ohms and a good battery so that seems to be pretty good here um, each cell should be 2.22 volts if you check there's six cells that'd be 13.2 i believe as far as volts so let's go over to this one here and once we get this done we'll have ethan start the truck to actually um see if the alternator is putting out because this will actually check that too so let me get it up here we got a good connection so again we're back so this has 12.56 volts hit check so this one will do in vehicle since it has both cables connected um, so we can do a battery test a cranking test or a charging test so what we're going to do is a battery test we're going to hit enter so check surface charge, turn lights on. Oh, this is a little bit different. So that's actually kind of, let me go back. Battery test, check surface charge, turn lights on. Take headlights on about 10 seconds, turn lights off. So you have to go ahead and um, turn the headlights on for about 10 seconds here. Okay, so we just turned them off. So make sure there's nothing here. Hit regular flood, cold cranking amps, 850. Hit enter. So good, it says recharge on this one now. This one says 850 amp, 722 with 12.44 volts and the resistance was 4.04. So what we're gonna do is actually see if it'll start here, but let's go back here to um, exit. We're gonna, we got check. So we're gonna check, in vehicle. We're gonna do a charging test first here. So we'll hit this. Okay, so it's supposed to be, tw it's 12 and a half volts. It should start it on just one battery. It may not, so we may have to pause and load it. But what we're gonna do is increase RPM to 100, so we haven't checked it yet. So we're gonna exit, come back. Um, what you want when you're charging, it should be somewhere around 13.8 to 14.7 volts. You can get, go ahead and turn your um, glow plugs on, get it ready, and then go ahead and start it when you're ready. Just increase RPM to about 2500. So we're going to push the spinner. Charge it normally. So you can see here that we had um, the ripple was 39 millivolts. It'd be kind of interesting. I should try to do some more research on. Um, what that looks like because I thought it would show us the sine wave, but it did not last And it could just be the time we have so let's see what the cranking amps are here So we're gonna get the other battery hooked up and be back 
Okay, everybody, so we just turned the glow plugs on, but we're following the directions. Turn off, press enter, enter the test. So I'm going to hit enter. Okay, start engine. Okay, go ahead and shut it off. So it gives us the millisec of time it took to start. The max volt, the minimum volt says cranking is normal. So this is where we're looking at that ripple test here, and we just don't have it. And um, it'll probably tell us it's a bad alternator. Increase RPM. So if we just get here, let's see what it says. No output. So that's probably what it would be if the alternator is bad. So what I can tell you is for the price of this, I'm pretty impressed with it. The two batteries that were here, we did not get on video because we were actually in the parking lot and we need to go to the Ford dealer and swap them. It did test bad for those batteries. So it worked on those and showing these ones are good, which are less than a week old. Um, it does show that there's no output for the alternator, which is a good sign. So I like that feature. For the money, I think it's well worth it. My older style snap-on battery tester was a couple hundred bucks. I know they make the digital ones like this now too. I've used one once about three years ago and it was pretty neat. But I'll tell you what, having this for someone who's not doing it every day, so far the value is worth it. Check the link below for where to purchase to help support the channel. Remember, share and like our videos and subscribe so we can actually keep doing what we like to do.